Actually, I do, shouldn't be playing the role of the moderator at all. Uh, but I'm a little confused about what I should be doing at this point. But I do have a few things to say of my own. Mm. Perhaps I should make that presentation. But let me respond to one or two statements made. Um, and I think Professor Katimani would like to clarify uh, something which you had asked him about. Yeah. That can come after I make my presentation. Is that okay? Please, please. Okay. Uh, I think there is a, an old saying that there is uh, neither a good book nor a bad book. But there is a good reading or a bad reading. I would like to you know, take, uh, speculate on this idea a little. In my view, I think Professor Bayu Patosa's remark that we ought not to neglect the Anglo-American tradition either in our quest for the new and the local and the more particular and so on. Uh, we have to have a good balance in our studies because if we ne ignore the writing coming from the West on some grounds of national pride or xenophobic uh, narrowness, we are also going to be diminished in some way because we live in an interconnected world and therefore what is happening in New Zealand or Australia or America or Canada is important for us and what happens in Britain is also equally important for us. Having said that, I would very strongly uh, uh, underscore what Professor Katimani and Professor Zafar Iqbal, uh, Zafar Khan have said that finally we need to do our reading from a particular perspective. And I think the Indian perspective, which Professor Khan was mentioning, uh, can be the starting point, no doubt. But then what is India? What is Indian becomes a problem. And so we need to deconstruct the concept of Indian also and keep arriving at, uh, at more particular formulations of points of view or perspectives. So I'm really speaking about a subject position and every one of us must have one in order to be able to read a text old or new, Western or Indian or whatever. Now, I would like to try and uh, address this larger question in terms of something very uh, particular. And I think it's a very good uh, uh, opportunity I have to respond to what Professor Katimani was saying. Much of what he says is very, very important. And of course, we cannot afford to ignore the oral tradition and the writing which is coming out from the sections which have been marginalized in our community, Dalit writing and of course Adivasi discourse. But having accepted that as a starting point, how does one read these texts? That is a problem which I have myself faced. I am upper class Tamil Brahmin. I cannot help it nor do I, am I apologetic about it. But the fact that I am of a particular class and a particular caste is going to make a difference in the way I read a Dalit or an Adivasi text. So what, this is a dilemma. And all of us will have this dilemma in one way or the other. There used to be uh, a slogan in black America, black writing by blacks, for blacks, about blacks. And you dare not get into this. Similarly, I think in Dalit circles, at one point at least, very fiercely independent Dalits would say, Dalits alone can understand their problems. It is none of your business to even talk about it. You cannot possibly read us or understand us. So Dalit writing is by Dalits, for Dalits, about Dalits. I cannot accept that pro proposition because the world is divided, whether we like it or not, into different groups, into different castes, into different classes. And I think the way of literature, unlike the way of politics, is to bring people together rather than separate them. Politicians are wonderful at you know, creating conditions for division. But literature has this wonderful adhesive quality, what Whitman called adhesiveness, where we can stick together, we can bring people together. Therefore, I am suggesting that having accepted the fact that there is a category called Dalit literature, and I know Limbale's wonderful work towards Dalit poetics, having accepted that there is an Adivasi discourse, which is different from, shall we say, a Brahminical discourse or some other kind of discourse, we still need to ask what brings people together. And I think 
somewhere, even a left-wing intellectual like Chomsky has had to accept the notion of a universal. And I think the universal has to be arrived at through the particular. So when we read a Dalit text, and shall I say, suppose I read it, what is, will, what, what is it that I will look for? As another human being, I will be able to empathize with the suffering, the sorrow, the hurt, the, you know, the feeling of rejection and the feeling of humiliation which someone else is going through. I think I have enough humanity to be able to respond to it. But still, the intensity of my response is unlikely to be of the same order as the intensity of the response of a Dalit reading the same text. Therefore, we have to accept that there are these differences. And yet, should these differences mean that we should be all the time different and have nothing at all in common and that we should not look for possibilities of reading each other and trying to, uh, trying to you know, uh, take on, as Sir Philip Sidney would put it, another nature, grow another nature. It should be possible for us through the creative imagination, through the imaginative intensity of literature and through the critical act of reading imaginative literature to move beyond difference to sameness. Because finally, there is such a thing called human nature. But human nature is, you know, uh, while it can be considered a monolith, it can also be seen as, in a way, informed by difference. So once we accept the fact that there is difference, it should be possible for us to see some sense of unity in this diversity. This is my dilemma, and I have not been able to sort it out. And I am very, very grateful to Professor Katimani for having provoked this particular response from me. And I'll be glad to listen to what he has to say. And of course, I think uh, Professor Khan will be opening up the discussion to the audience as well. Ladies and gentlemen, before we talk about Professor Katimani's uh, stand and some comment made by Professor Ramana, I would like to say something about uh, Professor Vyupa Tosa's uh, presentation today. Professor Tosa uh, has been educated in the United States of America. Uh, she has been interested in British and American literature, but uh, her major work, it seems, is more on folk literature. And uh, she has really gone back to her roots. That's wonderful. A story telling project. It is a very popular project in all um, American universities today. In fact, uh, in some American schools, even parents are called uh, once a week to come and tell stories to children. Because what has happened in American society is there is so much disintegration of family life that family has become nucleus. Grandparents are not there anymore. Most families do not have grandparents. So when grandparents are not there, who tells the story to children? And therefore, people are invited to come and tell stories. Well, uh, Professor Tosa, uh, you did work in this uh, area, a storytelling project. And uh, what uh, impressed me very much that you encouraged the secondary school students to collect the stories. In fact, uh, this is one of the things that some research scholars should do here. Folk literature in India is very much uh, neglected. People do work in uh, Hindi, Marathi, and other areas, but when it comes to English, of course, there is very little storytelling in English in our homes, but uh, scholars could still work and translate some of the uh, folk tales from Indian languages into English. We read good folk tales in Indian literature in English. Uh, so, I appreciate your research because uh, this talks about the traditional wisdom folk tales bring to families and children. The new generation needs the traditional wisdom uh, which we find only in the folk tales. So that was wonderful. Um, as I close this uh, discussion now on Professor Tosa, we come back to Professor Katimani. I do agree with some of the points raised by Professor Ramana. Uh, but there's just one thing I would like to say here, that possibly if you are thinking of our, about any uh, parameters or thinking about uh, a feature where we could come to an agreement generally, we are not divided into camps now, but I believe that humanism, humanism, 
uh, no matter how you define humanism, but that is one thing uh, very common in humanity. Literature does begin from particular. Everybody knows that and goes to universal. When I write about uh, Hyderabad, I write about the people and suffering of rickshawala in Hyderabad. The rickshawala in Hyderabad suffers, but the same kind of suffering can be experienced by, by somebody in Mexico or Brazil or Nigeria or any part of the world. Because we human beings are the same, we have uh, the same kind of sensitivity and we have a lot in common. At least humanity is one thing very common between us. Um, the floor is open for discussion. I would not like to say much. I, there are uh, some very young and brilliant scholars today. But remember one thing, time is of importance. It should not happen that, now, most of the things I found in conferences and seminars, when people ask a question, they do not ask a question, they want to make a speech. You, you understand my point. And what happens is, there are 100 people in the hall, so there are 100 speeches. And the time is over. When it comes to last five minutes, the chairman says, now the time is over. And some places I found the chairman even has to stand up and say, the time is over, he's thumping on the table. So I hope this is not going to happen. Please remember, uh, frame your question and one question at a time, please. So we start with Professor Katimani's presentation. Feel free to ask questions, but one question at a time. And once you make a question, when you ask a question, please sit down. Allow the person to respond to it. Thank you very much.